Is it just me, or have gaming keyboards gotten a little bit stale and a little bit boring? I mean, think about it. Have there really been any keyboards in the last couple of years that have truly innovated, given you something new, whether that's for the gaming experience or maybe to transform your entire setup? I don't think so. <laughs> Apparently Ajax doesn't think so either. Today, however, could be the day that this all changes, as ROG have just dropped off their latest keyboard, the ROG Claymore 2, the sequel to the incredibly popular Claymore that actually did things a little bit differently by allowing you to go 10 keyless, or by moving the number pad from one side to the other, so it doesn't matter whether you want to do work, gaming, or maybe a little bit of both, you could pretty much customise this to however you wanted it. The thing that's got me excited about the Claymore 2, however, is that they've pretty much upped the ante in every single way that they could. Firstly, and something that is incredibly important for me, is that you can use this completely wirelessly. You can still get the RGB lighting. I think you get around about 48 hours of battery life. It's got brand new optical mechanical key switches, so it should be even quicker than before. And of course, we see the return of that infamous removable number pad. So again, no matter how you want to play, this is going to have you covered. So is this any good? Is is it the ultimate keyboard and ultimately should you buy one? Find out after a short word from this video sponsor. It's 2021, which probably means you need to update your cables. But the question is, which should you go for? It doesn't matter if you're after USB-C, HDMI, optical, auxiliary, adapters, it doesn't matter. They not only deliver the reliable signal that you need, but they're built to last. They're remarkably strong, very high quality, and you can chuck these in a bag and pretty much just not worry about them. My favorite thing about these though, definitely has to be the price, as you're not paying ridiculous in-store prices for something that just about works, here you're getting everything you need in a ridiculously affordable package. Check out iVanky today and grab your cables with that link down below. Here we go then, the ROG Claymore 2. As I said, genuinely excited about this one, and I really did quite like the old ROG Claymore, but it wasn't my personal favourite, just because I found I didn't really need a removable number pad. However, as the years have gone by, I guess I've seen the light a little bit and have actually made the switch to a 10 keyless keyboard, which does leave me with a bit of a problem because there are definitely times that I could do with the extra keys. So here is the base Claymore. It's actually quite a different design to what we saw before. It definitely feels a lot more solid to me. It's not got so much of that whole Mayan design, I guess. And I can definitely tell that right out of the box, it does seem to be a little bit taller. The old Claymore pretty much used an all metal design, whereas this, unfortunately is definitely uh, a little bit on the plasticky side. It's got metal on the front, but the main thing really is that when it comes to rigidity, it's got no flex to it whatsoever. So it's not something that would bother me, but it is definitely something to note. It's a really nice touch that ASUS have actually implemented USB-C on this. ROG also get bonus points for actually giving you somewhere to store this USB receiver. Some people like myself would use this in wireless mode and you're gonna get the full one millisecond response. But if you're someone that wants to use this more traditionally and actually leave it connected to your computer at all times, then you still get USB pass-through, which is pretty cool. As long as you're using that USB-C cable, then you can connect something like a wireless mouse straight into your keyboard and actually still get a pretty clean desk even though you're not using it in full wireless mode. But that of course is only one piece of the puzzle. We do need to check out the, I guess, the more unique feature about the ROG Claymore, which is of course the second numpad. And to be honest with you, it's pretty much everything that you would expect. The design language is exactly the same as the keyboard itself, but you can position it at either side. You do have to remove these little plastic covers from the side, which might be a little bit easy to lose. Then you can grab your number pad line it up with the grooves and just slot it in place. It's really that simple. You can of course chop and change it whatever side that you want. So this is the more traditional approach. And this is slightly different to the old Claymore because that would actually just sort of drop in. You didn't have to do any lining up at all. But the problem with that is it did start to rock a little bit, especially over time when you're pressing some of these keys. It wasn't always the most stable thing in the world. Whereas now it should. Yeah, that is a lot, lot better. There is pretty much no wobbling whatsoever, which is pretty nice. And you do actually get a little bit of a kickstand on the back of the number pad as well. So if you want to use this in more of an upright position, that is so much better and pretty much fixes the main problem, if you like, that I did have with the original Claymore. I wouldn't have a problem using this and swapping it in. However, the thing that does jump to my mind immediately that is a little bit annoying is that the volume wheel is not actually on the main keyboard itself. And that sort of defeats the point a little bit for me because I want to be using a 10 keyless keyboard all of the time. Let me know how important is that down in the comments below. I should also mention that you do get four programmable macro keys here at the top that you can customize in software to do pretty much anything that you want. But don't forget that you could do the same with pretty much 
all of these keys. So maybe you want to use this in FPS mode without this, but then you play MMO, you could set up loads of different button actions and all of these keys rather than just relying on it for Excel spreadsheets, which is what I think a number pad is probably traditionally for. But you do also get a full size wrist rest. And this looks to be pretty comfortable. This is leather. It is quite cleverly magnetic. So it will line up by itself, which is good. However, if you do want to use this in 10 keyless mode, can you spot the problem? It doesn't work if you put it here because the magnets aren't in the right place. This is a, uh, a design oversight. Shall we actually see what this thing is all about though? Get it plugged in and actually start playing some games. Don't forget that you can do this wired or wireless. You can see it does start to come alive. The RGB is definitely a little bit more understated, but I'd say this is a lot more tasteful than most of the ROG products, to be honest with you. I have discovered one of the big advantages of this new system versus the old one, which is that it doesn't come off when you like turn it upside down or shake it around. If you're wondering why I decided to go for a Corsair wallpaper for this video, honestly, I just thought it'd be funny. Sorry, ROG. I have to say that the more I use this, the more I really do like the design. It really works on my desk, and I have also noticed that you can control things like play pause and all of your media controls with volume from the main keyboard itself. So while it is definitely quite off-putting that you don't have that volume wheel, at least you can do it with the function keys. But let's see what this thing is made of, shall we, with some Apex Legends. Always start with the flatline. I've said it before and I'll say it again, a gaming keyboard is not going to transform you into a better gamer in the same way that a really good mouse will. It definitely helps and this is a really slick bit of kit. It feels really nice and is very easy to quickly activate abilities, especially if you're just popping around in Apex Legends or anything really where key switches and key timings is really important. But I'm sure you already knew that, right? Ultimately you're buying a keyboard, I guess partly for comfort, but also just to give you the best possible chances of success. And in that regard, there really isn't much to fault about this. When it comes to mechanical key switches, they not only feel better, but do perform a lot faster. And when it comes to speed, optical mechanical is about as fast as you get. And the actual keys themselves are so satisfying to press on this, it really is a lovely thing to use. I've been using Cherry MX red switches for about 10 years now, and there is a surprising amount of difference between these and the MX reds. It almost seems like an evolution rather than a revolution, but ultimately it is a keyboard. There's only so much that you can do with this and still call it just that. It's nice that it's very familiar to use. It's very similar to Cherry MX Reds. You can also get it in more of a clicky and tactile blue version if you like, but this red version feels great to me and it's what personally I would pick. But ultimately £250 for a keyboard is a lot of money and these key switches definitely are among the best that I've used, but I wouldn't say that if I personally needed a new computer set up tomorrow, that I would be willing to spend that amount of money. I guess what I'm trying to say is that while this is clearly brilliant, I don't think there's anyone out there that explicitly needs this. So here we are then. I have spent the afternoon gaming, which I know is a big hardship, but ultimately someone has to do it. I found that the best placement of this was actually on the left hand side, which was definitely quite surprising to me. But in practice, it does actually make total sense because essentially you can just shove the keyboard up a little bit on your desk and then still make full use of having a bit more space for all of your mouse movements. So I think some of your alternatives are the Omen Spacer. So this is actually Cherry Mix Brown, but it is completely wireless and it's 10 keyless. You could also look at the best offering from Logitech. This is very different because all of the keys are very low profile, which personally I've come to like. I've been using this for the best part of a year. It's a little bit cheaper, but it is still very expensive. You can get it in 10 keyless or full size, depending on your preferences. And I really like that all of the media keys are actually nice and compact. There's quite a lot of functionality here. There is another keyboard you could definitely check out. This is around about 150, 160 pounds in the UK. And that is the Razer Huntsman. This also uses optical mechanical key switches, but that is completely wired. So no wireless functionality, if that's not something that bothers you, then clearly that is going to be a great way to go. But ultimately, it all comes down to the big question of should you buy the ROG Claymore 2? And it's one that's quite difficult to answer because it is so expensive that this is never going to represent great value. And I guess my biggest gripe really is just that there are so many other things you could spend that money on in the PC ecosystem. So in that sense, it is actually incredibly difficult to recommend. That's not talking about this specifically, it's just spending £250 on a gaming keyboard seems pretty excessive, right? But when it comes to the technicals, I guess, and ROG's implementation, Honestly, there's not really that much I would like to see different about this. The main problems really was that the wrist rest isn't really that useful if you're going to use this in 10 keyless mode. And personally speaking, I think that the volume rocker should actually be on the main body of the keyboard itself. Again, if you want to use this in 10 keyless mode, it is slightly limited at the moment. Other than that, and potentially some slightly buggy software, because in my experience, 
the ROG Armoury has not really been the best, but it is improving over time. Other than those three things, there's not really that much to complain about. So if you can stomach the price, you want something that is super flexible and ultimately gives you a fantastic gaming and typing experience, then the ROG Claymore 2 does come highly recommended. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. Do you think something as flexible as this is worth the money, would be useful to you, or would you rather have something like the Huntsman that is actually a lot cheaper, but ultimately does have very similar core functionality? Smash that like button if you've enjoyed this. It honestly helps out so much you wouldn't believe. And if you do want to check out current pricing on this, then as always, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, be sure to check out all of the cables from my Vanky. And I was actually thrilled when they reached out to sponsor this, because HDMI and USB-C are such a big deal in 2021. And I think we've all been through the process of going on Amazon and typing it in and just coming up with so many different results. And some of them have a load of five-star reviews, but then you can see those are one-star reviews that say this does not work properly. All of the cables that I've used for my Vanky, though, have worked first time straight out the box. But if you're after something a little bit more elegant, you can see the design of these means that they're very strong. They look pretty good, which I know is very nerdy, but I've always been into some really fancy cables. But realistically, if you use a laptop, then you're going to need some form of dongle to get all of your devices to work. And I Vanky supply a massive range of them, so regardless of whether you want something that's quite small and simple, or maybe something that's a little bit more elaborate, a full-size cable. So the next time you're after a new cable, think iVanky. Grab your new cables today, down with that link below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.